and welcome back. I know it's been a while, but I'm officially on summer break now, so I'll be ramping the video content back up. I had a fair amount of coursework and exams, and on top of that, I was working through some crisp creative block. And I guess I thought if I went on a mini hiatus without saying anything, no one would really notice. As it turned out, I was wrong, because I've had at least two comments asking me if I'm okay. So I'd like to apologize if I've accidentally worried anyone, and um, I'd like to confirm for you all that I am, in fact, still alive. In other news, I've been on testosterone for about three months now, and I still sound exactly the same. I'll be starting a kind of intimidating historical project soon, but in the meantime I thought it would be fun to let you guys suggest topics over on Instagram. Today's video is loosely based off this response, which says, a discussion on the long S. So today we're going to be writing a letter, 18th century style. Now the 18th century is a big period for written correspondence. In fact, the British Library even describes it as the great age of letter writing. The poet Alexander Pope set a precedent by publishing much of his personal correspondence, and other 18th century figures followed suit. The epistolary novel also became fashionable during this period. Novels such as Pamela, Evelina, and more scandalously, Fanny Hill presented their narratives as a series of fictional letters. Plenty of letter writing manuals were available to the public, covering everything from business letters to love letters, and even offering self-help advice to boot. Let's start with a sheet of paper. In the 18th century, paper was usually made from linen and cotton rags. Historical European paper molds typically featured wire laced horizontally through thin, vertical wooden ribs, giving the paper a distinctive texture. It's just about impossible to find perfectly accurate paper, but laid writing paper does a good job. I get mine from John and Sons Townsend. Now we're going to need ink and a pen. I'm using India ink. While writers in the 18th century usually used quill pens cut from feathers, I'm just using this much more modern calligraphy pen. I have it on hand and I'm hopeless at cutting quills anyway. Penmanship was extremely important and varied based on profession, gender, and social class in the English-speaking world. Plenty of manuals were published to help students learn to write neatly. I'll link some below. I prefer round hand, although my handwriting isn't particularly great. However, my absolute favorite 18th century hand is Current or Currentschrift, which was used in Germany until it was replaced by Zutalin in 1911. It's very different to the hands used by English speakers, but it's a lot of fun to write, and I use it in my journal. I just think it's neat. Now, if you've read any kind of printed or handwritten material from the 18th century, you may have noticed the long S. In print, it looks a lot like an F. The rules vary based on time and country, but in general, the long S is used in the beginning and middle of words, while the more familiar terminal S is used at the end. This is a feature we see in quite a few hands and languages. In ancient Greek, for example, the lowercase sigma takes two forms. This one is used in the middle of a word, and this one is used at the end. We see it in Corent and Zutalin as well. In fact, the long S was used in German far longer than it was in English. The long S actually formed the first half of a digraph with the letter Z, which evolved into the letter S set and is still used today. In 18th century English, the rules are as follows. The terminal S is used at the end of words or before punctuation, for example, before an apostrophe or a hyphen. However, if a word is hyphenated at a line break, you should preserve the long S. The terminal S is used before and after an F. In the first half of the 18th century, a terminal S is used before a B or a K. If a word contains a double S, you should use two long S's in the middle of a word, or a long S followed by a terminal S at the end. The long S is always preserved in abbreviations. In all other cases, the long S is used. Simple. Why the long S of all letters should receive special treatment, I don't know. But I do know that it's a lot easier to write the long S in the middle of a word with a metal nib or a quill pen than it is to write the terminal S. So think about changing directions really fast. Now I filled a sheet of paper, but I've still got more to say. Adding an extra sheet would have made sending this letter more expensive. So the thing to do in the 18th century would have been to rotate the paper 90 degrees and just keep going. Crossed writing can be difficult to read, but it would have saved money on both paper and postage. Separate envelopes don't come into use until much later, so we're going to fold this paper to form its own envelope. 
We'll fold it into thirds once, rotate it 90 degrees, and fold it into thirds again. Once we've addressed it, we'll need to seal it. This could be done either with a wafer, a round sticker that got sticky when licked and could be used to seal more informal letters, or with a wax seal. 18th century sealing wax was harder than the kind you can buy at modern craft stores and contained resin or shellac. However, it's very brittle and inflexible and could cause problems in modern mail sorting machines, so I'll be using modern sealing wax. Because it contains plastics, this is much more flexible and better suited to the modern postal service. Either way, you'll want to heat your wax over a candle, drip it onto the letter, and press your seal into it. Mine is a thistle because I thought that would be exactly what my YouTube audience would expect from me. So there it is, an 18th century style letter, ready to be posted. I really hope it's legible. That's all for today. I'll be back soon with some more sewing content. I've also linked my Instagram and my Ko-Fi coffee in the description, in case you'd like to see what I'm up to in the meantime, or help me make more videos. I'd also like to take a moment to thank everyone who has already helped support this channel, because it really does mean the world to me. Until next time, stay safe and see you soon.